Today we're going to be talking about a Moravian history story of the first love feast and it offered sort of a great awakening of friendship and peace and everyone sort of getting along and learning to live together in community. So we're going to start with our mindful breathing exercise. So go ahead and put your hands facing palms up and remember we're going to touch each fingertip as we breathe in, peace begins with me and then exhaling, peace begins with me. So let's just go through that together. Softly close your eyes. Peace begins with me. And letting go of the breath, peace begins with me. And an inhale, peace begins with me. And exhale, peace begins with me. And one more time at your own pace. You can softly open your eyes. So now I'll encourage you to find a comfortable seated position, sort of wiggle yourself on your sitting bones. Again, palms facing up, ready to receive. And we're gonna do our mindful listening exercise where you'll softly close your eyes and we're just focusing on our breathing and the sounds that you can take in going around you. softly opening your eyes. And I think I've asked Juliana and Jensen every other day what they've heard, but I'm gonna share that today I heard at least four different types of bird calls going on in the woods surrounding our house. So I would invite you to just think about what you heard going on. Maybe it was the air conditioner, maybe it was the ceiling fan, or maybe you also heard some sounds of nature if you're doing this outside. So now we're gonna move into our body prayer. So if you would, Stand up, find yourself feet shoulder width apart. I'm gonna take my glasses off. And again, if you need to go back and review this at a slower pace, go back to maybe Monday's lesson, but together we're just gonna go ahead and, and do this all the way through. Ready? Here we go. The sun, the sun, I salute the sun. The son of God lives in everyone. Christ has risen, Christ has blessed, the whole world in his heart rests. With Christ I rise, ready to live, happy to be, and ready to give. The sun, the sun, I salute the sun, Christ opens his arms to everyone. Amen. Go ahead and find yourself back to your mat into a comfortable listening position. That could be laying down, face up, face down. It could also just be seated comfortably, but we're gonna put palms up, hands ready to receive. Laying comfortably on our mat, we'll listen to the story of what happened on August 13th. I invite you to listen to this story of what happened in 1727 on August 13th and why it's an important day in our Moravian history. There was a nobleman named Nicholas Count von Zinzendorf who owned a large estate of land. There was a road on this estate that ran between two towns about a mile apart. On one end of the road was the town of Berthelsdorf and there you could find a Lutheran church whose pastor's name was Pastor Rota. You could also find Zinzendorf's house. At the other end of the road, Zinzendorf had given permission for a group of people who had to leave their homeland in order to live in community and worship as they wished. These people escaped threat of harm and they were related to the early members of what we now call the Moravians. They named this new safe settlement Herrenhut, which means 
God's Watch. Soon, other people from other places joined this settlement. Because of their differing opinions, the people began to argue. Disagreeing continued for several years. Feelings were hurt, and there was confusion and unhappiness. Zinzendorf wanted to help resolve their differences and help the community get along. Eventually, he helped develop a set of rules to help them live in peace and harmony, called the Brotherly Agreement, and everyone agreed to live by these rules. The people of Harrenhut agreed to do away with differences, to live in love and live for Jesus. Everyone began to get along. People prayed, read scriptures, and talked with one another. Pastor Rota visited Harrenhut and invited them to the Lutheran church down the road for communion on August 13th. During worship, Pastor Rota spoke and Count Zinzendorf led prayers for the people. All participated in communion, which was the first communion since signing the brotherly agreement. The service was full of joy and so moving that all became filled as one in the Holy Spirit. After the service was over, they were so full of love and joy that they remained outside the church and Count Zinzendorf had food sent from his home for the people to stay and fellowship together. We refer to this as the first love feast. So go ahead and wiggle your toes and fingers and gently open your eyes and then push yourself up to a seated position. So we listened to the story of what happened on August 13th, 1727. So there was a nobleman and do you remember what his name was? It's a really big name and it starts with a Z. Do you remember? Zinzendorf. Zinzendorf, yes, and he owned a lot of land. So we're going to do what we often do for stories, and we assign characters a warrior pose. And since Zinzendorf is the first character in our story, go ahead and show me what Warrior 1 looks like. What does Warrior 1 look like? Arms straight up. Yes, and in that low lunge. So front knee is bent, back knee is straight. And then you're sort of facing forward over this front. Yep, that's Warrior 1. Awesome. And there was a road on this estate that ran between two towns. So to show a road, we're gonna do banana pose, okay? So banana pose is actually laying on your back, okay? And we're gonna sort of make a road. So arms straight up over your head, and you sort of lean to one side and you curve yourself like a banana. Cause you know, roads aren't perfectly straight. They're kind of curved. Yeah, and you can lift your ankles off the ground and your arms off the ground. So you're sort of using your core muscles but you're stretched out like a road. Great job. Okay, so that's road. All right, so on one side of this road, one end of this road, there was a Lutheran church. So we're gonna make the pitched roof of a church with our bodies by doing down dog. So go ahead and push up to your feet and you're sort of gonna make, the, the back part of your hips is sort of the peak of the roof and you're gonna plant your hands and you can sort of walk them out. But this is down dog. And you don't have to make your, your heels touch the ground. It's fine with that. But do drop your head, okay? Looking back between your legs. Yep, that's down dog. Great. And since we had one character in our story, the other character is the pastor of this church. Do you remember his name? Pastor. Pastor, starts with an R, Rota. Okay, and for that we're gonna do Warrior 2. So can you stand up and show me what Warrior 2 looks like? Same feet as Warrior 1, but instead of arms up, we have arms out, one in front and one in back, and we're looking out those front fingertips. It's Warrior 2, great. Okay, so there was this group of people, and do you remember what they had to do? Did they have to leave their homeland? Yes. yes. 
So they had to leave their homeland because it wasn't safe for them to be a community worshiping God the way they wanted to. So to show them having to leave where they had been before, we're going to do a walking low lunge. So it will involve some movement. So go ahead and put your feet all the way to the back, the furthest part back of your mat. And if you're not on a mat, you're on a blanket, just move back from where you started. And you're going to do a low lunge and you can do arms like this. You can do arms out. You can, you can do whatever you'd like with your arms. I'm gonna do this so it sort of looks like walking. And then you're gonna to switch to the other low lunge, okay? So there's some movement in that pose. Yeah, nice. And who were these people? Who were these people that had to leave their homeland? Do you remember? What church do we go to? Moravian. Yeah, we go to a Moravian church. So the peop these were people who were sort of the um, the, the long lost cousins of what became the Moravian church. So we're gonna do a symbol that I think is pretty important to a lot of Moravians. What's something that we see at Christmas time? Like we star. hang it on our, yeah, we hang it on our front porch, a star. So we're gonna make a star with our bodies. This is called a reclined star. So you're gonna, again, lay back down on your mat and you're going to make a star with your body and your ankles are gonna be up off the ground and your arms are gonna be up off the ground, but your head and your core is gonna stay on the ground, okay? So this is reclined star. Nice. You can try to open up your arms to make as big a star as you'd like, okay? Good job. So they named this settlement, do you remember what they called it? Karen. Heronhoot, nice. These are some words we don't hear very often, Heronhoot. And do you remember what Heronhoot means, Jensen? Somebody's watch, whose watch? God's watch, good job. So we're gonna do a mountain pose with our arms pointing up to the heavens, okay? This means on God's watch. All right. So, did everything work out at Heron Hoot right away? No. no, there was some arguing, wasn't there? People weren't always getting along. To represent the arguing, we're gonna do, I think this is one of your favorites. What do you think we're gonna do to represent arguing? Lion's breath, yes, absolutely. So go ahead, this is on your knees, big lion paws, and sort of reach forward. And if you wanna do sort of an angry roar face, you can do that to represent the argument, okay? Yeah, so there was disagreements for several years. Feelings were hurt, and they said that there was confusion and unhappiness. So to represent the confusion and unhappiness, we're gonna do sort of a seated twist to represent that people were not looking to one another, they were facing away from each other, they were turning their backs. So go ahead and cross your feet, and towards that ankle, or that, that bent leg, I want you to go ahead and turn. So you're gonna feel that stretch through your back. You're looking away, and then guess what? You're gonna switch to the other leg and look away. This is a great stretch for your back, okay? Nice. So let's see. They eventually, because Zinzendorf helped them write and agree to live by the brotherly agreement, everyone agreed to live peacefully. So to represent peace, we're going to just go back to mindful listening, okay? Yeah, and the people of Heron who'd agreed to just do away with those differences and live in love. So to represent love, we're going to do a squat pose with open hands, okay? So squat pose, you're going to squat down, and you can sort of find yourself into a frog pose almost, okay, with your legs out and learn to live in love, we're gonna open up our hands, okay? Like we're reaching out to people. Yeah, you gotta balance up on your tiptoes, don't you? Okay, we're gonna learn to live in love, and we're gonna learn to live for Jesus. And for Jesus, we do that wonder person pose. Nice job, hands on your hips. And people began to pray and talk with one another. So for praying, we're gonna go right to hands at heart center, Okay, they prayed together and they read scriptures. So we're gonna do that to represent a book, read scriptures. And talked, we're gonna do a chair pose. 
with arms outstretched, sitting in a chair, reaching for someone else. Great. And then I think the last one that we're gonna have to learn, we have two more poses. We have one to represent communion. What do you think, name some things that you see when we do communion at church. Bread. You see bread and you see the cup representing the juice or the wine. Mm -hmm. And what is all that sitting on? Table. A table, yes, very good. A communion table, it usually is pulled out from the wall and sitting closer to, to the people of the congregation. So for that, we're gonna do a communion table. So we're gonna do up table, very good, yep. Hands facing behind you and sort of up in like you were gonna do a crab walk, but you have to lift that midsection to make it a perfectly flat table. Great, so that's for communion. And then we have the service was full of joy. You already know breath of joy. And then one in the Holy Spirit, you already know Holy Spirit. Remember, that's that flowing goddess pose. Great. Are you ready to try our story? Wonderful.